Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Even if that does mean people getting triggered at some titles, we are here to give you the Hopium Free version of the cryptocurrency market. Not everything is uh, roses and bull market, huge news every day, but in the bull market, it you know, majority of the time it is a lot of big news. Today, we look at a little flash crash in the market. I'll let everyone sort of just jump online, say hello, good mornings. We're a good 30 seconds in. So make sure you like the video up, subscribe to the channel. We've just hit 142,000 subscribers. Wild. Thank you very much for your support. Uh, obviously, I'm on Instagram, Twitter. They've hit 10,000 each. And so I'm getting a lot more content on Twitter as well. Uh, I'm a convert of Twitter, that's for sure. Am I saying that? Convert? I'm converted to Twitter. And of course, uh, Instagram as well. We've got a lot of q and A. So I've got to go across to the Q&As. That's what I was planning this morning. But I just did a couple of posts on Instagram instead and thought I would jump on live because why not? We're in a bull market. This is when everyone's here. Come the bear market, everyone takes off, goes on holidays and uh, just gets a little bit sad about their losses. Which brings me to my thoughts on the market. And I have had a few, yeah, I just saw shirts. I'll mention that in a second. But the thoughts on the market, the, the one I did on Sunday night, obviously my time, I'll speak in my time. Uh, Sunday night, I looked at, are we seeing bearish signals? And then Monday, I put a video saying uh, very bullish on these coins, you know, the, the awesome foursome. That was last night. And they were looking fantastic. Ethereum, Cardano, Chainlink. I say were, but I say, I mean, they are looking fantastic. I mentioned my reasons for those, which we'll look at in the video as well. We'll just do a bit of an update, especially after a minor flash crash. Sunday night, looking at the uh, the, the bearish signals. And I, like I mentioned a few weeks in a row now, probably two or three weeks. When we're in this range between that high and the low, we've sort of, we've set our boundaries. There can be a lot of volatility. It's the what I've said day after day after day. Even though we see some cryptos going nuts, like the meme coins and the Ponzi schemes. Greetings from Ponzi. Just remember, we're at that Ponzi scheme, uh, Ponzi stage. So I'm wearing this in light of Shiba Inu. I mean, Dogecoin's fantastic. They're all fantastic, but they, they essentially work like a, like a Ponzi scheme. The only way the price is going to go up is if someone else buys it. And essentially, that's investing overall. If someone doesn't buy the investment, someone doesn't buy the land. The land is the biggest market. If someone doesn't buy the land, well, you can bet your bottom dollar it's going to go down. So basically a Ponzi scheme. <clears throat> Brittany, this man doesn't sleep. All right, so I'll come back to those thoughts. Uh, the, the video titles, just looking at some bearish signals. Short term, I've always said that, short term. Long term, I'm still quite bullish. I want to see some big trend changing uh, reversal signals to be not so bullish long term. But in terms of the short term, yes, we can have a, a short term outlook where things aren't going to be hitting all time highs day after day. Talking Bitcoin, talking Bitcoin. Uh, and I assume from your comments here, guys, uh, the majority of you are watching the videos and you understand what we're talking about here and getting a feel of the market. Then you start to work in with work in flow with the market. Whereas there's the odd few questions, people that get triggered. And I don't know why I spend so much energy on those. Um, you know, I guess I just see what I see in the market and I can't understand why others don't, but I guess there's horses for courses and they'll say, one day you're saying this, one day you're saying that. And I'm like, I'm sure they don't watch the content. They look at thumbnails and titles and they don't get the gist of what's going on. But I do appreciate all of your comments as well. And I appreciate the guys who say, you don't need to put any of this like eye catching titles or those thumbnails that are like, but some to some degree i enjoy those and some degree i they obviously work and i want more people to see the content rather than just sort of getting swept up in the hype and the emotion and then just saying well the bull market should never end these things are going to go up 50x well here we are the bonfire people are here i could not get rid of those from the scammer comments i'm sure there are a few real bonfire comments but uh overall I, it just seems like a scam not that you won't make money from it Sorry, my hair's a bit of a mess. I just got in from the surf. All right, let's have a look at your, your comments. Why? So we're looking at why. Why are we going on a uh, bear market correction? Let's let a few more people roll in and then we'll get onto the chart. John, thank you. Gavin, 
massive supporter in the crew, uh, the investor accelerator, then you understand more what I'm talking about. Bingo. Thanks, buddy. Jason, from one Jason to another, you're one of the best YouTubers. Look, I guess this is my first few minutes just to enjoy the comment section. <laughs> one crypto boy I know invested only $100 in shipments, up 30 grand. The, so these, these cryptos, you need to get in very early. That's where the gains are made. And if you're not in very early, then I just don't bother with them. Even if there's, you can make some big gains later, but it's not like those sort of gains. And those stories of putting a hundred bucks in, now having paper profits, I know invested only a hundred dollars in Shiba and is is up 30 grand, but is it still paper profits? Do you know what paper profits mean? It means it hasn't been withdrawn. Is it paper profits or is it real? Has he realized those profits? That's the game because look at the, I don't know if that, Dogecoin guy took his money out. The Dogecoin guy that put 200 grand into Doge or 180 into Doge and, you know, shot up to the 80 cents or 70 cents, whatever it was. Uh, you know, now it's come back down to 46 cents. So he was at around $2 million, probably 1.2 million now, just rough numbers could be way off. But, you know, you can see the massive drops in those figures. What I'm getting at with all of these meme coins, all of these Ponzi schemes, is that people will get their paper profits and get really attached to those paper profits. And it's like, I'm at 30. If this thing doubles again, I'll be at 60. If it doubles again, I'll be at 120. And they'll probably still make, they'll, they'll have to make money from a hundred bucks. There's no way it's going back to that hundred dollars in the short term, but that's where you get sucked into the gains. And if you're not in early, like I said, then you're sort of getting those, the gains, maybe a hundred percent, 200 percent for the massive downside. Um, there are, if you don't know, there are Facebook groups, there are Telegram groups, there are Twitter pages, there are YouTube channels which focus specifically on these Ponzi scheme cryptocurrencies. I remember them last cycle, the biggest things were masternode coins. So it, it kind of works the same. You would buy the coin up, then you would withdraw uh, uh, like staking rewards from those coins. And they had huge returns. It was like 10,000% per annum, a million percent per annum. So you basically get your return back within the day or within the hour. And if you were late to the party, like a few days in, then the coin has just absolutely crashed. You've lost 100% anyway, and all of your gains were worth basically nothing. So this these probably work a little bit longer, but then there's going to be more people that will sell out quicker as the cycle progresses. So the people who are in earlier are happy to wait a little bit longer. And then as the next... Ponzi scheme coin comes out and the next and the next people will start to sell a bit early because like, oh, well, these guys made 100,000%. I'm happy with 50,000%. Oh, I'm happy with 2,000%. Oh, I'm happy with 300%. And that's when they all start to crumble and, and break down. So if you can find them really early within the first few days, literally within the first few days, you you could be up for gains like, like this that we see on the screen here. But if you leave it a few weeks, you, you're not going to get those sort of gains. There are the oddest, odd, odd exceptions. You've got stuff like uh, SafeMoon. You know, their, their marketing team is absolutely massive. And at some point, probably it's all going to crash and the people at the top are going to be really, really hurt. So I'll get back. I really want to hit into your questions today. Let's have a look at the, the charts and answer the question I've got on here. What, you know, what caused the flash crash? Why are we flash crashing? I guarantee there will be... An, 101 different reasons for a flash crash then then once people agree on a reason for a flash crash it'll all come down to about one or two reasons but at first everyone will be talking about xyz and then people will all start to find a common ground saying yeah that's probably the reason for it and something on a on an exchange something here something there i'll tell you to be honest i don't look at that stuff i looked at the charts and that's what i'm basing my reasoning on We've bounced back from it. This is looking okay. <clears throat> so the Bitcoin chart, I would just see it. Generally, we have these flash crashes. It's just a clean out of the stops. I, I, I don't want to disappoint. I don't have a big elaborate story I can give you. I like to keep things simple if you've been watching the channel. Simple, as simple as I have here with white bars. Let's get onto the candles. There's some color in your life. Let's add some color in. We have a nice red wick into this low. Now, this volume is looking a little better. I'm not saying that 
this region won't get broken down again. Like it won't get tested at the 52s or we won't test the 59, 60K level again. I will just bring you back to this chart. This is our major chart that we have been looking at for some time. Key level for bullish momentum, 60 and a half thousand, this bar, 18th of April. Remember that? And first signs of weakness around the drop below 54K. So we've tested 54K multiple times now. Uh, today's bar, which will be closing in about an hour, hit 53 and a half. 5th of May and the 4th of May both tested 53. So they broke through the 54, tested it, reversed, and the volume just started to die off on this run up. That's why I was thinking we're probably not going to test here as a probability. I thought maybe we'll, we'll give it a crack, but just look at the volume. Oh, come on. Too much stuff over the screen. Just here, this volume. So we're moving up. There's a higher high here. Volume's dropping from the previous day. Moving up, volume's dropping. Moving up, volume's really dropping. Trying to go for another move above and the volume's dropping again. And then we had to have a clean out because there's just not enough buying pressure. We've got to find a level that people are comfortable to support the price. That's the reason for the flash crash. There's going to be, yeah, I see some comments here talking about um, uh, liquidity trades, taxes in the US, traditional markets falling also. Yeah. Greedy long traders. Uh, someone's saying I trade like the stock market, but this is not regulated. <laughs> That's why it's so much fun. Yeah. Uh, your approach to crypto trading is like the stock market. Yes. Doesn't matter if it's not regulated. What happens here is human emotion. So there's not different human emotions in this. There's just all humans. And we are able to play the market faster, harder, scam it even more. Like, come on, Ponzi schemes that are all out there. Um, but you also have that in the traditional markets. That's why people are getting slammed by the SEC. You've got, um, you know, big funds that will try to play the game, rig the game, find out other information that others don't have, and they try and play that. But they are all testing levels. That's that's how it works. So you can see very clearly on the chart. Let's uh, bring it back down to bars because it's easier to see. And I'll take all of this nonsense off. Look at this low here, fifty-two three. So we're looking at this price here. This is the low price. Can you see that up there? Good. So low 52,000, call it 400. Then we had a low here at 53,000, 52,900, essentially the same. Then we had another one at 53 and a half. These lows are getting higher and these highs are also getting higher, but we just weren't seeing that volume come through. So people are wanting to support the price and buy it up, but we're just not getting that follow through at the upper end. We, we are looking like 53 is a reasonable level now, seeing as we've supported it a few times. But should we come down again, I suspect we'll probably break through. And this is a minor look at the three times at the same level rule. You can see that. And that's what I used on Cardano for the break. Dollar 68, we still hold above the highs, which is good. And we just want to make sure, the other thing to look at is are we getting affected on Bitcoin pairings on altcoins during this flash crash of, of Bitcoin? And if I don't see the majors that are in a bullish momentum, that are at a basically in a bullish pattern, and they're not getting too affected. Oh, what am I on? Aave, get off this. This is the one. Yeah. So if the altcoins are holding their ground against Bitcoin value, while Bitcoin has a bit of a fall, it's extra bullish for me. That's how I play these. And I'm like thinking, yeah, we're pretty strong with the cryptocurrencies. So this, so this was ADA today. We had the flash crash, but it's holding its ground very strongly against Bitcoin value. So people aren't selling out of these cryptos uh, and getting scared and then throwing it into stable coins. They're holding their positions in cryptos. ADA is a good one because it's like, a is it a market leader at the moment? I'd say so because it's at all time highs. The other one is Ethereum at all time highs, leading the market. Yep. Look at that. It's Ethereum is even going to close its highest close on record. Ethereum BTC has gone to 7%. While Bitcoin has had a flash crash, Ethereum's gone to 7%. All right. 
So we're at 1,200. If you guys haven't liked the, the stream, make sure you do that down below. We've talked about Ponzi schemes. We've talked about different area sectors in the market. We're looking at reasons for uh, how to establish whether, you know, how, how the flash crash happened and then how to see whether we're still in a strong section of the market or if this could be a turning point to get into a bear market. My reasons are the major altcoins which are leading the market. They're not laggers. You've got lagging altcoins and this swaps around as narrative and sentiment shifts between different sectors the leaders are still leading they're not getting affected by the bitcoin correction or the bitcoin flash crash you know it's basically just wiping out some of the uh, the stops and then testing the lows before we can start to make a move higher you don't want to think of it like building a, an apartment block or a house you don't want to build too fast or too high if you haven't tested the foundations and so Bitcoin looks like it needs to continue testing those foundations. And if, if they test the foundations enough and they become weak, it breaks down. You need it to break down so that we can then build more solid foundations to go higher. That's the, the entire premise of trading. That's the way I, I see it. And the breakdown is looking at human emotions and how people are trading it. So that you have your charts, you've got your patterns, you've got your rules, you've got quants, you've got scientific mathematic data that shows you stuff. At the end of the day, that's what it's actually doing. We're just testing these levels. Did I answer the question? I feel like I have. You guys let me know in the comments if I answered our question for today from the channel. What is a flash crash? Why is it happening? How does it happen? <clears throat> should we be worried? What is a flash crash? Flash crash, I've just mentioned there. Okay. Bitcoin is on the chart. Let me come across to the comments again. I'll um, stop sharing so you can look at me and my Ponzi t-shirt. Greetings from Ponzi. All right, I'm going to drop your comments now because I'm, I'm checking it out. Uh, sorry if I missed them earlier on, but I'm checking out your comments now. Like the stream up if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel. Twitter. Instagram, I'm going to go over and do a little bit of Q&A before I get uh, digging into some work today. <laughs> we should all panic. So, yeah, I'll, uh, I, I, yeah, follow Instagram and I'll do the Q&A over there. Then you can see my uh, retirement fund. That would be down a little bit. Ponzi today. These nuts in the next safe moon. You're welcome. <laughs> what are key signals for a serious crash? <clears throat> key signals. N I'm thinking about how I talk about it and teach it in the Investor Accelerator, which you can find a link to in the description down below. I look at major timeframes. I look at swings, swing charts. And it's not just, this is the difficulty that I see. So sorry to back it, back it up one, but I'm, I'm sure everyone's pretty interested in like, what are the key signals for a serious crash? What I see across the internet, across YouTube is you have to look at this chart and this chart or this key indicator tells you this is what's going to happen. I, From the 11 years that I've been trading, from the countless number of traders that I've talked to who are in the game full time, who are better traders than me, who have been trading longer, you know, they do leverage trading, intraday, old school traders. I don't know any of them that look at this one key signal. Not having a go at the, the person here, crypto crazy, not having a go at them. It's what I see on YouTube titles to, to sort of gather you in. And I get that. But then even they just talk about this one thing. It's like, look at this one chart of the moving average. And this tells you whether in a bull or a bear. You can break it down to something simple, but I don't see it work like that. So I put a few indicators together. And if they happen to come together at similar times, then that's my signal that we might be starting a serious crash. Nothing is 100%. There are times when a lot of the signals come together, you get a, a major correction, but then longer term, we continue up and we're just basically building another foundation. I look at time, I look at price, I look at pattern and volume. They're the major, the major four. Not worried yet. Next flash crash prediction, like when will it happen? We need a Pizzino coin and we will pump it to the moon. <laughs> Ponzi Pizzino. Or have a ticker of Ponzi. No, you, you can go to jail for that stuff here. 
my answer, come on, come on. Do, do just a tiny bit of, you know, there are channels out there which just focus purely on Ponzi coins like Shiba Inu and SafeMoon. And they also talk about Doge because it just gathers the momentum and the hype. What do you think about Doge? Please talk more about Doge. What have I done to deserve this? <clears throat> Doge, what happens? See the crash? This was last time we had a crash and we bounced back and we accumulated, moved on. We're on a, only on a daily chart here. This time we had a crash and the following day continued to crash. That looks like sentiment has shifted. Day down, reversal. Up, day down, down, down. Big reversal, key reversal bar. I'll throw you some color in your life because what you guys are used to. Uh, accumulation, look at the volume drop here. That, that was a breakout. I honestly did not take these things because I can't bring myself to buy at those sort of hype levels after one pump, two pump. This would have been a good one here. That was a long, long enough accumulation in a bull market at a break at around eight or eight or nine cents. But getting the breakout here at 30 cents, you're not really making that much. There's 60 cents and it made it to 70, call it 76 cents. So it's not really that much for the downside risk. But yeah, 100, 150%, probably not that bad. This was the area that we're looking for when Doge was going live on Saturday Night Live. You can use this across any market, remember. It doesn't have to be specifically Doge. One hour. Remember, we had our dog picture here. You can go back and check that out. And we we're looking at it from this hourly bar, I believe. It was like 2 p.m. in the afternoon. I think this is my time. Yeah, this is, this is my time here in the afternoon. And I said, we need to get it to around this 57 cent level. And we hit 57.1, 57.2, 57.6. I started putting the, um, the alert at 57.7. And we didn't make it back to our little, our little dog face. I'll get rid of now. I tried it again here, made it to 59.7. But high volume, big wick, attempted again and just got smacked down. So I got shut down a few times. You can't, if we continue to break lows, then it's just to the downside. So you'd really want to see these lows hold. So that's around 43. These lows are at 41 and a half. So I'll throw a an alert here. Let's see if we get it below 41. There we go. I'll put an alert on there and then we'll see what happens from that point. Back to Bitcoin, 58K. See the low here, that was decent volume. Yeah, this has been the biggest volume out of all of these attempts at the 53k level. What what trumps it? This is the only one that trumps it here back on the 18th. See why this 18th is so important? This 18th bar. That's why we need to get above it. I suspect now we're obviously going to well, look, I'm just having a stab at it here because the volume's high, the um yeah, the volume's high. The price has jumped back a lot more. So I suspect we'll come back to test these highs. This is the next test, then another test, and then we start to make our way a bit higher. So we've we've covered this test here at around 55.8. We're getting there. This was the next test at 56.3. And then somewhere up around here, I don't have another level just yet. I'll have to do a little bit, little bit more digging. I suspect it's probably 58.3. All right. Where? Oh man, I'm sorry. I didn't have that on the screen. What a what a what an amateur. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna move on. Screen. Look, this is the problem. This is where I read your comments from, and. It did an automatic update. That's my amateurness. Automatic update, so I can't even see your comments over here. You guys are screaming screen at me. Thank you. <laughs> Fail comp, thanks. How about I just leave the screen on so I stop doing amateur shit? There you go. All right, at least it wasn't too long. All right, moving on. Someone call me an idiot. Come on.
Thanks, Eva. <laughs> this is like my th my third video going live for the for the last twelve hours or something. I've got two more coming today. Nervos might have a video on that. You're forgiven. Thank you. What's next for alt season? Uh, Dogecoin does it. Look, it doesn't, it's not like a real project or anything, but it means a lot in terms of market sentiment. That's what I have found. And I'm sure a lot of other people have come to a similar conclusion. We have a lot of people in the market looking at trying to get onto these coins, which they've seen already do thousands of a percent return. And so that sort of gives you an idea of the type of people that are currently in the market. Same deal when you got Safe Moon, Safe Cow, Shiba Inu. Mars Rocket, Come Rocket. You know, it's the type of people that are here now. We tried. When do you think this bull market will end and we move to a bear market? Covered that. When When will the altcoin part two video be out? Uh, I'm going to edit it today and that's going to come out. I'm probably going to put it out tonight because I've got the the interview that I did on Friday evening with Akil from Property Share Market Economics to release. It's about an hour 15 long. We're talking about the property market, like the overall cycle of the of the market, the economics. Uh, and then if you've ever heard of guys like Harry Dent, who have been calling bull markets for the last 10 years, just have a little bit of a dive into how these people talk about these things all the time. And so if you're only here for the, the Ponzi scheme coins, you're probably not going to be interested in learning more about the overall market and how things are working and where we see the market going over the next five or so years. I'm seeing that go straight up. I've been very bullish on the land market and the stock market, but people only want to call out what, what I'm talking about day to day on the crypto market. You wait until we get to about 2024, 2025, into that 2026, and how many people are going to be talking about the land market and how crazy it will be. I know it's several years off, but that's where we're going to get to at that point. That will probably be closer to the end than we are now because people are still saying that we we are down now. So just to recap, the, the video today, we're looking at what is a flash crash in the bull market? Should we be worried? Did I answer your questions there? That was in the first 20 or so minutes. I believe I have. It's at the beginning of the, the video there. Uh, next Bitcoin halving is going to be crazy, potentially. But because it's such a big play now, it's a big piece of news and everyone knows it. I don't suspect it's going to have the same impact like it's had previous times. Because if everyone knows it, then you know what I'm saying? Like, why wouldn't people just buy it? Think about Doge. Everyone was saying Doge is going to a dollar for Saturday Night Live, and it didn't happen. The Wall Street bets for February was talking about uh, get Doge to a dollar then, and I think it barely made it to nine or nine or maybe ten cents on some exchanges, maybe only even eight. Um, so whenever you know some sort of news, and you might say, well, these news are completely different. You know, Bitcoin halving is a legitimate thing, and these are just rumored up speculative hype, hype pump and dumps. It's the same thing. People know what's coming, so they're going to do the same thing. That's what I talk about. It's just emotional. All right. Pink is getting blocked. I'll put them in timeout. Same deal. If you're shilling Shiba and Bonfire and all these things, you're in timeout. Why won't you invest in Shiba Swap? Uniswap is garbage. What Uniswap isn't garbage. <laughs> it's garbage for the little players who don't have the money to use it. Uh, but there's a lot of people making a lot of money on those those exchanges, and eventually it'll the fees will work itself out. This is just what happens in the space. Why is there a huge crash in the market? Let's just cover this off in terms of a percentage and realize what is huge and what isn't. Day on day, so yesterday's close was at 58,200. Today's current close, which we have about 45 minutes to go, 
is at 55,900. So we're seeing 4% down on Bitcoin. The rest of the market, the major, the major cryptos which have dropped are Doge, which is to be expected after such a massive move up. Labs, Ramp. I even see this as a... I want to see where we close on this, but it's not looking too bad at the moment, especially that we've hold it, held up on Ramp beneath these lows here. Poker starter, one inch, nice spike down. You had a big move up. CRO USD, CRO. I said in my uh, the the fifty two altcoins. I just think this is looking weaker, and that was I filmed it yesterday, so I didn't really see this as going to hold up. And we're breaking through fifty percent. One of those longer term ones, which I'm just going to keep accumulating. They don't tend to move like. Well, I mean, look, there's a pump and dump, massive pump there when they said they were going to burn a whole lot of coins. We retraced and then we started to move up and failed at the top. But when it gets going, it goes pretty well. We had this solid move up, correction into the March low. This is for crypto.com. And then majority of people, so a lot of new people weren't here for this massive run that it went on from March low to these tops. There's about 700% in a dollar value. And its BTC value was pretty big as well. And then as it gets to these final stages, everyone wants to be buying CRO because they have something that people want on their platform. And so it just goes on these runs. Uh, so I'm waiting in for one of, one of those sort of runs at the moment. If we don't get it, obviously disappointed, money down the drain, but it's speculative. This is, this is what we do. I think the company will do very well. It's been around a long time and it continues to promote and do very good marketing, and the products that it serve, that it has, that it delivers, are very good as well. The exchange is very good. It's not, it's not a Binance. I get it, but it's still a very good exchange. Their debit card is really good. Their marketing is very good. They are expanding into multiple different areas of, of cryptocurrency. They have sponsored F1, so the Aston Martin car F1s. They have an NFT platform, so they are putting themselves in a lot of places, and that can be a good thing. And I'm also thinking. Will it work out in the long run because they have, they've got their hands in so many different pies, if that's what the bloody saying is. CRO, I want to see CRO BTC before I move on. CRO BTC. I gulp here because I don't think that's looking too good either. We've broken down beneath the support levels. I suspect we'll come back and test the 250 level. See the volume, but this is Bittrex. I can't really use the volume too much on Bittrex. It's not a great sign for volume. 1800 online. Have you liked the stream up? Have you liked the stream up? Go do that now. Why is there a huge crash? We looked at that. Oh, man. Oh, my. I lost all my comments. Thank you for answering. You are welcome. Fifty percent correction incoming. Ah, so now the bears come out. We're with the bears. Uh, BTC. Uh, actually, I'll go to the total market caps. Total. 2.3 trillion. Go, if you haven't, after this stream, go and check out the 52 altcoin videos that I've uh, 52 altcoins on that, that video. Part one's out this morning, about three and a half hours ago. Part two I'll release tonight. In... In those ones, I or the one that just came out, I look at the shitcoin index and the total two market cap. This one here, looking at our logarithmic resistance, logarithmic. You could almost call that a hit. Look at that. So, I'm anchored it to this point here in September. This is our, I'd say, a major correction before we really took off. You'd see that in the chart. So that's why it says it's a significant high that I'm using as an anchor. Now we're using the next high before we had that correction in February and we've hit again and hit again. So it's not really surprising that we're bouncing off uh, of this logarithmic um, resistance. I suspect if we get through, and this is what I'm talking about in the video this morning, if we break through this, it will go nuts. Things will go very crazy. Breaking through a log logarithmic resistance is really, really strong. 
let's see what happened here. So that we're just increasing its speeds now. The same point anchored to the first crash in January, hit, 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 breakout, retest, 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 and now we're starting to pick up speed. Picking up speed in logarithmic scale is, is way more massive than linear. Just the look of it, I should say. Obviously, the gains are bigger. All right, let's have a look at your comments. 2,000 online. Uh, thank you for the super chat, Stephen Powell. What do you think about ADA long term? I've watched a few videos on your thoughts, but wanted to see if you have thoughts two to five years out. Let me show you guys a great video that my friend put up, Crypto Tips. Dano. One day ago. All right, I'll share this screen with you. Stop. Think about that, this with all projects. It, you, like even if you hate Cardano, just listen to it, have a think about it for long-term stuff. Short-term for this bull market, anything's on. Things are going up. So I'll stop this and I'll share this other screen. 50. All right, so you see here, examining Cardano. This video here, what no one is saying about Cardano. See that, it, that people disliked it as well because they don't want to hear, I guess, the truth or someone's version of the truth. So yeah, that's that's a good video to, to check out. Go go check their channel out. Follow Crypto Tips. These guys, like Heidi's been putting out videos since early 2017. It was like one of the first channels I, I found and it's like really good, uh, like quality content quality content. Staking pool. I've also got a staking pool for Cardano. So that's, I'll have that in the link to this video afterwards. So if you want to stake your Cardano, check it out down below. Uh, what do you think about a long term? Long term, I don't know. I don't know. At the moment, they haven't proven anything. And that's what Heidi and Toby are talking about in this video here, that examining Cardano video. So long term, they haven't proven anything yet. I still, if they can get it done, it's going to be great. And that's what we're speculating on. That's what we're all speculating on is if they can get the smart contracts done, if it can be a solid project long term. I like their uh, their staking setup of how they're trying to stop big pools coming together and they'll continue to break that up. So I think that's a pretty cool thing. That's why I continue to invest in it and have it on the channel and discuss it. You just you don't know if they're going to cover come across the same problems that Ethereum's come across because they haven't tested big transactions. They haven't tr tested the amount of volume that's on Ethereum and put it onto another platform like Polkadot or Cardano or even Solana. But at least Solana has smart contracts and they're they're working over there. <laughs> Artful Dodger. Why would anyone trade alts on margin? Beginners, I, I would definitely say not. But look, if you're experienced and you can see these moves coming, then why not? What program do I use? I use TradingView. TradingView, there's a link in the description. I'm just reading your comments now. So if you guys have comments, drop them in here. Carl the Moon and MM Crypto get rich when you guys get liquidated. No, the way that the way the platforms work are if you just trade, you don't even have to get liquidated. You just have to trade on the platform. You just you just trade using the links. That's what the affiliate links are. I've got affiliate links in in the description to these videos as well for Swiftex, for Binance. Sometimes I, I CoinSpot. I have to look at that if it's down there. But if you choose, if you use those platforms, then the you get a, a commission from those affiliate links they're not just exclusive to youtubers they're ex anyone can use them and anyone can go across and get your commission on those so if you are, are more of a website builder than someone who likes to talk on video then you can build those websites and those guys do amazingly well you have a website you know how to funnel traffic to your website you give helpful advice have the links there, discuss it with the company, and you can go out and make your own monthly incomes from those as well. These guys just talk online rather than create a website. 
Cody triggered. Get that F out. Even little money knows a 400 transaction fee is ridiculous. It's our only option right now. But even after wasting many thousands of dollars in gas fees, you can't seriously say it's not garbage. It is garbage. Uniswap is not garbage. Yes, the fees are extremely high. Yes, they're still very high at 400 bucks for anyone, regardless of small money or large money. Yes, I'll agree with you on that. But Uniswap, the, the software, the program, the what it does is not garbage. Uh, Legote James, I'm not the biggest fan of Litecoin, but that, thank you for the super chat as well. But the LTC BTC chart looks super promising. Yes, it does. We've looked at that a few times already. LTC, I won't do that mistake again. Share the screen. Just opening up LTC, BTC. We've seen the breakout. This is the breakout, the retest of our downtrend. And now it's continuing its, its move up. That's it. I've had a few videos on that. We had 725 days down. We've had about three, four, 1100 days down from the high. This is why I just look at uh, Litecoin as a, it's not a pump and dump coin, but essentially the move is like a pump and dump. It pumps, dumps. This move here isn't that big. It's probably not really worth it at 0.1 of a cent. Oh, it's not too bad, actually. That's a that's a 100% move. And then it crashes, comes back again, crashes, come back again, crashes. So it's not a long-term hold. That's what I see on Litecoin. And the, the ranges are, it's getting close to its first resistance level, somewhere around that 7.5 cent, uh, 7.5% of BTC. And then the next one's up around 1.5% one and a half percent. Sorry, this other one's not seven and a half percent. It's 0.75-ish percent. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, Kelvin Lara, I didn't see a question. It just says super chat. Five bucks super chat. Yeah, I didn't have a question there. Sorry. More users in timeouts for spamming. Let's have a look. 2,000 online. That's epic. Um, like the stream up if you haven't already. Go follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'll jump over on Instagram, do a, a Q&A over there for you guys as well. So make sure you're following. And I do it almost every day and you get to see my portfolio, my retirement fund portfolio through BlockFi, uh, BlockFi, Blockfolio, which you can find a link to down below. You can use it to trade. It's really easy trading like it's for beginners. And then you can also track your portfolio on Blockfolio, which I've been doing for years. I really like that, that app. The layout's really beautiful. This is why I put the videos together today and yesterday, because this is like the most common question I get here and on Instagram is like, is it too late to invest in something or thoughts on something? So go and check out those videos as well. Why especially the video last night. It's a 15-minute video. I've got the timestamps in it and you can see what I'm talking about when it comes to Ethereum, Cardano, Chainlink, Bitcoin. Is it too late? What What is your goal? What do you want out of it? And what can you stomach? This goes for every single cryptocurrency. Is it too late? How much of a downside can you? are you willing to stomach if you were to buy now? Do you understand support and resistance levels? Like, Will it come down? Will you buy that, that that support when prices are down and stuff's red and, and you, you know, you're going to freak out? And how much upside are you expecting? Are you expecting an upside like Shiba Inu, like some sort of Ponzi scheme? Or are you expecting something from a top market cap coin, which has a 400 something billion dollar market cap? I saw that. I've put them in timeout. Anything pink is in timeout. If anyone sees something moving, please alert the group. <laughs> How do we translate the great reset and all this stimulus towards crypto market? <laughs> this isn't... If I want to play the game that everyone else is playing, I would say buy a lot of Bitcoin, buy Ethereum, buy it all. It's your only ticket and your only card out of the great reset. Uh, the, 
I'm having to think about it. There was a good video, if you guys are interested, a great video from, which is Real Vision. Listen, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Real Vision, Raul Pal did one with a guy, I think it was Dominic. Anyway, it was about taxes. So how do we translate the great reset and all of this stimulus towards crypto market? I don't think we translate it towards crypto market. I honestly don't think we need to translate it there. Yes, I think we need to have some in our portfolio. The biggest thing with cryptocurrency is that it is digital and that you are in control. If you don't want to take control of your money, then it doesn't really matter. You might as well just stay in the regular system. The biggest thing from that video that I'm talking about and the cryptocurrency and the reset and how all of it's working is I think what I see is there's going to be a division between whether you're physical or digital. And if you're in the digital space, which you have digital money, you're working digitally, you can scale in the digital world, you're going to have a step up on the people who remain in the physical. I think that's kind of sad because I, I love the physical stuff. I love eating out at restaurants. Uh, you know, just any services. You go to get a massage or um, a spa treatment or anything like that. Not that I go and get spa treatments, but, you know, for the, for the ladies. But I love restaurants. And so all these sort of things. These guys, unless they have a digital backup, they're going to be stuck in the physical. So, And you can't earn anywhere near as much in the physical as you can in the digital because you can't scale in the physical. One hour is one hour in the physical. Whereas in digital, you can scale a lot better. So I think it's a, it's not that it's a deeper question, but it, I think it's just a different avenue to look at how all of this translates. And the great reset. I mean, it's already happening. We're always resetting. We're always resetting. We haven't stopped resetting. It's just a nice buzzword to throw onto the crypto market, Bitcoin and gold and silver. You know the channels that I'm talking about. There's like gold, silver money by Mike Malone. There is Mark, Mark Moss, who gets really into the whole reset thing. And I, I don't think it's going to happen because there is so much going on in both worlds. Look, uh, Elon Musk. Elon Musk is in the physical. There's a there's one scenario where you don't have to be in the digital, but he is creating stuff at scale. So that's electric. It's going towards that new, whether it's the new world order or whatever you want to believe in the whole um, climate change side of things. We need electric vehicles and solar power everywhere and wind power, hydropower, these, these sort of things where the new energy is shifting towards that is going to be scalable as well because we all need to service ourselves in the physical space. So it's probably a longer question or longer answer than you were looking for for the question. But uh, if we're protecting ourselves and we're in the cryptocurrency space, then I see that as our way to protect our time and our money, which is digital now. And it doesn't need to be controlled by a bank or a government, but they will try their absolute hardest to take that. I talk about this in a, in detail with Akil on the video that I put out today. So make sure you stick around for that. It's an hour and 15 long. I get it. It's long. Put it on speed. Watch it over a few different sections of your day, driving, walking. You know all the, all the deal if you're listening to podcasts. You don't need to watch us. You can just listen to it. Get YouTube premium. It's like 15 bucks a month and you block out all of the ads. The ads are necessary on YouTube to for YouTube to continue promoting your content. Otherwise, it kind of goes by the wayside and there's the odd few that get out. Benjamin Cohen doesn't have ads. Uh, that's the crypto guy. And also Coin Bureau doesn't have ads and they're doing extremely well. But YouTube has the right to put ads on the videos and so they just don't get the, the ad revenue. YouTube takes 100%. Um, so yeah, talking about the reset, the crypto markets, I think they'll do well. The reset has been ongoing forever. I don't think there's going to come one day where everything just resets, but we're moving into different different ways of doing things. <clears throat> XLM pump. That was my pick. Do we have a correction? Wow, look at that. Just destroy the data. XLM BTC. Oh, man. Broke the high and it's setting up again. XLM ETH. That's weak. XLM USD. Come on. See, big wick at the end of a, a long move. That's the last 
bar into the high with a massive wick. Reasonably high volume. I'm on Capital Com, which is the only one I could find that had uh, stellar data all the way back. This is into 2017 after it peaked. So it still hasn't reached its all-time high yet. I think it'll still do pretty well based on the XLM BTC chart. Daily, daily closes in about 20 minutes. All right, what do I want to see from this? This is the swing. We're above the 50% so far. And if I just do it on the daily bar, we are below the 50%. So let's, we want to get a, a close above 1,200, just a bit over 1,200. That would be a good start, at least in this region's okay. But we, we want to see the buying occur at the end of the day towards the close. That's an old saying from stock market as well. And it, it works across all markets is the amateurs control the open, the professionals control the close. So we're going into the close now. Yes, I know it's a 24-7 market, but data still has to reset at some point computers still have to reset bots have to be programmed to work a particular way so they need a reset point they just don't work 24 7 and so they need a reset point and that's why we're looking at that's why we always look at the closes as well pretty decent volume biggest that it's had since january on this massive massive wick so it's not unheard of for stellar to do huge ridiculous wicks and then come back from it. All right. I hope that was helpful. That's like market stuff that I've learned from that book. I, I talk about is the trading in the shadow of the smart money and it's Wyckoff theory. Wyckoff theory. <laughs> pump a coin. Do you think we can actually pump a coin with 2000 people in a live stream? But you'd have to get there first. That's the problem. Can we pump a coin? Oh, sorry about your super chats. Dominic Chapados. Total beginner. What are my first three moves? First three moves. All right. I would say teach, learn. Just start learning about something. Don't throw money in straight away. I've got videos on the channel that you can learn from to set yourself up in a, a plan, trading plan, things to ask yourself so that you can begin to think about the market. Um, leave it at that point and then start to grow from there. Just create yourself a plan. Learn, create a plan. Have an idea of what goal it is that you want from the end of the day. Are you just jumping in the market because everyone else is jumping in or do you have specific goals that you want to hit and then you will and that you will exit the market when those goals are met. That's a big thing that most people don't have. They don't have a goal of where they want to leave. They have a feeling of how long they want to stay in for, and that feeling usually expires long past the top. They usually stay in well over the peak. That's 100% will happen this time as well. It happens every single time. No time is different. I'm just reading your comments now. So if you want to throw some more interesting stuff down here. Whack, whack off. No, not whack off. Why? W-Y-K-O-F-F. -F. I think W-Y-C-K-O-F-F. -F. I will bring it up. Wyckoff. What is Wyckoff theory? Yes, I'll bring the video up, the screen up. Trading in the shadows of the smart money. Nineteen hundred online. Make sure you're liking that video up down below here. Subscribe to the channel. We've hit 142,000. This is the book here, Trading in the Shadows of the Smart Money. It's 70 bucks, but I guarantee if you learn what's in here, you will make more than $70 from the book. That's the return you'll look at. Uh, this would be a digital copy. Wyckoff Methodology. This is not the same book as this. So maybe start with this if you don't want to put the money in. I have never read this book, so I can't recommend it but I might even buy it just to see. 
I might get this one. All right, I'm going to keep that open and maybe I'll pick that up and just uh, have a bit of a read of it. But yeah, Wyckoff theory. Wyckoff theory is essentially like it's putting human emotion and explaining what the bars are doing with that human emotion or that strategy. Is Eli Musk a rapper? Five bucks. Thank you for that, Kelvin. Uh, I think that's too big of a market cap to be pumping ETC. Shiva, too big of a market cap. TVK predictions. It's probably going to have a bit of a sideways period. That's what I've been looking at for a while. It's just... It's found a reasonable bottom at 30 cents, but it's probably going to go back and test it. And we need to wait for the narratives to start moving back across everything to cycle through in back into NFTs. You can see stuff like Ecomi has also struggled. That's the one of the biggest NFTs. Ecomi, Engine looked like it was down. Chili's, the NFT stuff is down. Don't wait for it to start pumping again. Track it now. I'm not saying buy. I'm not saying buy anything. I'm saying track it. Because it, when you start to learn about it, then you'll see some good entry points. Hide current comment. Let's look at a new comment. <laughs> Thank you, Muhammad. Pump the like button. Oh, where, how did pink get back here? Good work, Connor. Setting the goals. Are you buying the dips today or tomorrow? Uh, I haven't gone onto my trading yet. I don't. I have to look at it. I don't think there's anything I'm really looking to purchase anymore. If I feel like I've got all my positions set, but I'm not saying like no one else should. If you've got your plan, then do what you need to do. You don't like we all say buy the dip, buy the dips. Like how many dips can you buy and how many dips are actually worthwhile buying? Another question, when I look at many cryptos, they are all flatlined for a year and then all of a sudden they spike starting in February. Uh, I wouldn't say they all spike in February. There are different times. But yeah, there are certain times of the year which they'll spike more often than others. And that's just a cyclical thing. They flatline for ages because no one's interested. You can go back on, on my channel and some of the other OG channels talking about cryptocurrency through 2020. And I was doing a lot on ASX stocks because that was what everyone wanted to talk about. I just love charting, but I'm more interested in crypto. And people didn't want to know about Bitcoin back then. I think the video has got a few hundred views, if that, saying Bitcoin's at a good price now, Ethereum's at a good price now. No one wanted to hear it. That's okay. Uh, and so that's why we get this flatlining because people aren't ready. And that will happen again and again and again. And that's why I always say just stay with the stay with the market. When selling a portion, would you convert into Tether USD any other form until you're ready to re-enter? Yes, I think that's a good idea. You know, it's, I'll do a video on that. I think I wrote it up here. Uh, I'll do a video on that because you don't need to be in the market 100% of the time. Being in the market 100% of the time doesn't always give you the best results. When you look at a chart... Think about this. This is a really, really simple way to think about the market. Uh, I can I can literally choose any chart, but I'll put it on a weekly just so that we can see more of the data. The data. Now, look at this market here, XLM. How much of the time is the market actually moving in the direction that you want to be in? this much time here, about five weeks or something. And then you probably don't want to be in the market for one, two, three years. That's a massive percentage of being out of the market. Newbies just, well, and also you've got hedge funds and stuff like that, but they're not in cryptocurrencies. Some funds, they, they can't be out of the market. So they have to find ways to stay in the market and then hedge themselves. 
for a small traders like us, retail traders, we don't need to be in the market 100% of the time. So if you're in the market here, you're losing. Let's do it from this high to where we currently are. Yeah, 70%, 80%. I'll pick any other any other chart. Uh, what else has some data to it? Some data. Litecoin. Litecoin USD. The only time you really want to be in the market is from this exact low in March to this exact top in December. Then you don't want to be in the market for one, two, two and a half, three years, right? Maybe even here at the best case scenario. So call it two, two and a half. So you're in the market for about 10 months rough numbers, nine months, whatever, then you're out of it for two years. This is if you're just trading long. You're just wanting to buy and hold. Think about those in terms of a percentage. Think about that in terms of a percentage. I'm going to do a video on that because that's probably one of the most important areas for newbies to be in. It, I've, I've read that from old trader books. You don't have to be in the market 100% of the time. And if you're out of the market more often than you're in, it's possible that you could still, well, looking at the charts like this, you will win. But then you just got to get the timing right on these areas. And that's why people just say, oh, I'm just going to stay in the market because they don't understand how to find these areas. Uh, that's what I do in, in the course, the Investor Accelerator. I just look at these areas. You don't have to sell out at the exact top. You get stuck and you sell out here at $200 rather than $400. It's better than holding it down to $25. And there's this easy swing set up through here as well. You're just like, well, the support broke at around $200 to $20. I'm out. You freak out because it's coming back to that level. Don't worry. The rest of the next few years show that it was a good time to exit here. Getting in, there are areas that you can see uh, breaking. I've talked about that many times on the channel, and I talk about it in more detail in the Investor Accelerator. Link to that in the description. That's the membership course. You're getting in on breakouts, so you don't have to stay in the markets here. If you find some good heavy dips, you buy them. But on the breakouts, it's like, all right, sweet, time to get back in. So all the time that we're out, yeah, about here, a thousand days, nearly three years, we're back in. We're only in for half a year, not even. In terms of percentage, it's like 80, 20. Out of the market, 80%, in the market, 20%. Take your money and run. That's a good question. Thank you. Oh, far out, blocked. Pink is blocked. Uh, I didn't see the super chat, but a lot of people asked for pancake. Sorry if I, I missed it or if you're just saying you did it. I don't know. Sleeping. Is that what a sleeping chart looks like? I don't think so. That looks like it's sleeping. When it's flatlining like it, like it's dead, that looks like it's sleeping. Don't worry about this, this other data. That's like a psh, flatlining dead. Now it's not sleeping. It's going sideways. It could be in an accumulation stage, a reaccumulation above old highs, but it's definitely not sleeping. Bitcoin. Bitcoin is sleeping through here. That sleeping took off. And it wasn't really sleeping here. Energy was coming back through here, but this is sleeping here. That was kind of a, not really sleeping, but it wasn't very, uh, it wasn't very energetic. Then we had a final move up and then a dump, but that was sleeping. It was sleeping for December, January, February, and into March. December, four months it was sleeping for. Back down to the daily. We got our eight minute close. We're closing in eight minutes. Do you like the colors or do you like the white? Colors or white? Oh, how did pink get back here? Block. Uh, colors. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. You guys win. Colors. Can't find your videos to learn trading and risk analysis. Can you share the links, please? Too many videos. Not sure which ones. Check out the playlist. 
where is my playlist? There's a playlist at the top. It's like new to cryptocurrency. Check this out. The homepage, new to Bitcoin and crypto, start here. I'll have to put that video in there. Yeah. Just search swing trading, Jason, Jason Pizzino. But I, I'm not, I, I, all right, let me have a look. So I'm sure you guys will like to have a look at it too. Let's see if that works. If I do it, Jason Pizzino swing trading. Yeah. First video that comes up for me anyway. I'll, um, old school didn't get a haircut here you go here's the link i don't know if it'll work but it should sometimes youtube blocks the links the mark who said the market's tanking what is this australian stock exchange the market's tanking i am scared are you actually you're joking Go back. block Cool. We'll wait till the close. So if you've got some good questions, drop them down below. Let's keep keep it interesting. And then we'll uh, we'll wrap up and see where the market closes. Let's look for our, our figure. I'm using my FIB tool. The high and the low, 50% is 56,500. Ideally, let's get a close above 50%, 56,000. 600 okay there's the alert we'll see if we get it i'll drop it down to an hourly just so we have a bit of fun to look at good volume off this low we got five minutes to 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 get a little higher than where we are but look at that see these highs coming in pretty closely to these lows that's a good bar and now it's just in those periods of like what are we going to do literally is what do we do we're testing this low, or are we going to hold this low? Are we going to break through this, or are we going to hold this? You can see that. I'll put this one here. That's our other low. So it's just going to stair step its way and figure out this low. Or do we come back and try and test something down here? I'm not saying it has to get to this price. It might only fall halfway to it and then it'll get bought up a lot more because what we're seeing on Bitcoin, a low, well, lows back here, higher low, higher low, higher low. So it's, it is getting higher very... What was that? I don't know. Uh, but they're, they're not that convincing to me just yet. But this is a super strong volume bar. So I suspect if I had to choose right now, I'd say we'd probably break through this low here of 56,400. That would be where I think we'll go first. Super chats. CRC. What's CRC? Two and a half thousand CRC. Has your better half tortured you about ETC pump? No, I don't think she knows what that would be. Whoops. Oh my God. They're just everywhere. Block. I saw a comment. I tried to click it. Phantom. Okay. I need a coin that's a few dollars now and will pump to a hundred in a few years. Look at market caps. Don't look at the price of a coin. Don't look at the price of a coin. Just look at market caps. The can oh yeah you can also search on my YouTube page and I put the link in this chat already uh, main video page under your banner right side of the screen Jason trolls can easily start new accounts or save them yeah they can so you just got to keep blocking thoughts on Matic I think Matic's pretty good is that what you wanted I like Matic. It's not a big position of mine. Not that I don't think it should be. It's just so many other cryptos that I I have. It's like, what do we do? Get some mods. 
man, it's a, it's a massive full-time job now, isn't it? I started just wanting to share educational content because the majority of my time should be spent learning and researching more into the markets. And then it becomes, you know, a, a bigger side of this. Look, I'm the one that chose to do it. So I've got uh, a bot that I, I've I employed a company to look after the comments, it's comment sections in the videos. And so a lot of those bot comments should be gone now, but then you know how bots work. They just create more and more. So we just have to keep on top of those. Um, so yeah, the last few videos you'll see don't have a ton of those comments in them. I can't say they'll be like, well, we'll they won't be a hundred percent, but it will be a lot cleaner than they have been. Don't slam those what? mod life. We've whoops. Lies. What are we on about? Oh, they're back. Back from the grave. <laughs> back to the grave. Uh, XLM. XLM we covered already in the on the uh, on this live stream. So go back and check that out. Four ninety nine. Thank you. I didn't see a question with it. Thank you for the super chat. Super chat. How many minutes we got? A minute left. More comment, more content creators are hiring services to screen comments. These are the times. Scammers and trolls are bound. Yeah, big time. Oh, well, I think I need to get off soon. My mother is here to look after Izzy while... Beth packs up the house and I'll get back to some work. Uh, yeah, we're moving this week. We're moving moving home. That'll be Friday and the weekend, so I'll still get some videos out. I did ask you guys, you're, you're interested to hear what I have to say, so if I'm not in this little office setting, then that's the reason why. More about paper trading. It's like uh, demo trading, having a demo account. One of the Aussie crypto exchanges that do it well is uh, SwiftX. You can have a demo account on SwiftX. Link to that is down below. So use that, sign up, get your $10 of free Bitcoin when you verify your account. Demo is like paper trading. Have yourself a Excel spreadsheet, a written journal, something that you can take note of your trades and learn from. That paper trading is good, but you don't get the emotion of the market as well. That's the, uh, that's the downside to it. Thoughts on VET. I've got that in the video coming up tonight, so stay tuned for that. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Bell notification icon. Like the video up. Uh, what else you got to do? Twitter, Instagram. I'll jump over to Instagram now, so make sure you guys jump over there. We've got a good 1,600 online. Thank you very much, guys. Probably have another flash crash. There'll definitely be more flash crashes along the way for sure. So make sure you're on the channel. Uh, thank you for the two pounds. BTT, I think it's another little one that people love. <laughs> Are you staying in Queensland? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Now you know my, my geolocation. Permissions, I do not know that one. I'm sorry. But yeah, I'm wrapping it up now. Thank you. Thank you for the happy move. Fresh pair time. Thanks for your knowledge. Take care. See you in the new space. Thank you, guys. I'll see you guys, like I said, over at, uh, I've mentioned it so many times. Yeah, I know. Instagram. I'm going to do that right now before I forget. Great realistic content. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Details, videos. Can you also post videos about important stuff dealt in this live stream? All right. I've thought about doing that. I've done it once or twice before. So you can check out the live stream. I'll, I'll probably do an update of the flash crash as a mini video as well. It's probably similar to yesterday's video where I went through and did those major uh, the major alts, and then I can do an update of that, looking at it in terms of the BTC pairings to show the strength in the market, even though Bitcoin's had its little flash crash. Our levels, the market has closed for the day. What did we hit? We hit a close of about 55,888. So we're just a little short of our 56,500. All right, guys, I'll see you over at all the other socials, which I've mentioned a million times. Thank you for putting up with me this morning. Live streaming happening more often, so I'm glad about that. Videos coming out. 
please watch the video, the live stream with a kill. Put it on fast. Watch it when you or listen to it when you're doing some other stuff. Really good stuff. He knows what he's talking about. He's a really good guy on that in that sense in terms of economics, cycles, how things work. Very different to the stuff we hear in crypto, where we hear in crypto, world's crashing, get your reset on. Uh, we're not coming back from this. Things are going to be different, all that sort of stuff. It's a very different view. So if you want to expand, check that out. I'm I'm excited to go through and edit it and upload it because I love to listen to it again. Cool, guys. Blocking the last of the users. Enjoy your days. Enjoy all your days. Yes, been to Thailand. Hello, India. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning to everyone else. I'll catch you at the next one. Until then, have more fun.